Well, the mafia has nothing on the CFMEU. That's the kind of statements that I'm getting from uh, building con uh, con contractors, from workers, from uh, people in the community. This building came together in a bipartisan way to address workplace cultures. We passed, uh, passed legislation, codes of conduct. We are very conscious that we are holding ourselves out as a nation's example. We, want, we were here to call out any culture of intimidation, a culture of a fear of speaking out, a culture of discrimination, a culture of helplessness felt by recipients and victims of workplace abuse. And yet that bipartisan will to call out bad workplace culture evaporates when it comes to dealing with the kind of thuggery and intimidation on other workplaces across Australia. When we talk to industry, when I talk to workers about what's happening on work sites across Australia, they immediately ask for anonymity. That is their first request. They will say that bully boys don't belong. That proves that request for anonymity that proves that we have an industrial environment where people are too scared to come forward, too scared to call out that sort of intimidation and thuggery. But through the prism of anonymity, they will tell the stories of what's been happening on the Cross River Rail site in Brisbane. We've seen it on the TV, the scuffles, the fights. What we don't always see is the workers being followed home and intimidated there. What we don't see is parents being sent photos of their children at school and being told this is the, the, the insinuation is there will be a consequence for their children if they don't tow the union line. Businesses are being intimidated into using certain contractors and being subject to outright vandalism and delays on their project when they don't get their way. Things like the power supply to the site being cut. Things like toilets being filled up with uh, concrete and toilet paper to undermine all the plumbing work that's been done. Doors being kicked off their hinges to demonstrate that they're not fit for purpose. These are what is happening on building sites and it has been happening for decades. It's been happening for decades. It is only now been brought to the notice of the public and a demand for, for a consequence for this outrageous behaviour. The malicious lodgement of ambit improvement notices aimed at tying up companies in legal costs, where they have to go to the courts and have them proven and thrown out, uh, proven as being unreasonable and thrown out so that they, they don't receive consequences for future projects. In my home state of Queensland, the stories of workplace health and safety inspectors who are on stress and sick leave because they have been bullied so much. How did we get to this situation? And what it does is it undermines every union in this country. Every union in this country who is represented by uh, a union official sitting opposite has been undermined by the unwillingness of people to call out what has happened with the CFMEU. We have watched the current minister, Minister Watt, spend all, almost his entire time in this place being the CFMEU's biggest cheerleader. We've seen it at Senate Estimates, where he would mercilessly attack the building regulator when they dared to hold his mates, the CFMEU, to account. The number of, of members of this government who said there is nothing to see, I had no knowledge of what was going on, when it would have taken only the most cursory conversation with a construction site worker, a, a building contractor or even their CFMEU mates to know that this was the case. Uh, I thought it was extraordinary to see the tattoo that's been emblazoned across the chest of John Setka. That's terrifying. That's not something that should be across his neck. Thank you, Senator. That, that, is, that, is, that is such intimidation and not intimidation for those of us on the coalition side. That is a clear message to members of the Labor government. 
they are coming back to hunt you. I won't put up for that, and I hope you don't either, because it's not been about fair pay. It's been about payoffs. When the government mandates 30 per cent pay hikes for these well-paid construction workers, what does it do then for nurses, police officers, childcare workers, teachers across the public and private sectors? Well, they're not getting a 30 per cent pay rise. This is not about fairness. It's about payoffs. And Labor has brought forward this bill not because new information has been found out, but because they have been caught out. They have been caught out protecting the CFMEU. And it's been a part of Labor's DNA to turn a blind eye to these intimidations and threats. It's been part of Labor's DNA to willfully walk past behaviours that, at its heart, is criminal. And having willfully turned that blind eye, having willfully walked past behaviours in clear sight, Labor now asks us to trust them, to trust them that their minister, the CFMEU's greatest cheerleader, to be the watchdog. We have no confidence that this minister intends to genuinely root out the evil that has existed in the heart of the CFMEU. Labor hasn't only been reliant on the support of the CFMEU. In many ways, Labor has been a product of this support. The coalition will hold the government to account because we will shine a light into the dark places that Labor has sought to keep hidden. We are proposing amendments to this legislation that the administration must apply to all branches of the CFMEU for a minimum of three years. The minister should not have the ability to unilaterally end the administration early. The scheme of administration can only be varied by the federal court on the application of the administer, of administrator. The legislation must clearly set out what must be in the scheme of administration. It should not be solely determined at the whim of the minister who has been the greatest cheerleader for the CFMEU. That political donations, political campaigns and advertising by the CFMEU should be explicitly banned during the period of administration. And for the purposes of transparency, the administrator must provide a written report to the parliament every three months from the commencement of the, the administration about its activities and progress and appear at Senate estimates that there must be a new fit and proper person test to be introduced for all CFMEU delegates and officers. And I would hope that would apply to all delegates and officers of all unions. The administrator should be given additional powers to investigate dealings between the CFMEU and other parties, including other registered organisations and political parties. The administrator should be given the power to review and amend the CFMEU rules. There are three things that we think must happen. We must bring back the ABCC. It was the only regulator of the construction union, the only one calling out this behaviour, and it still, it still had intimidation, threats, thuggery, cost overruns uh, and, and um, workers going on stress leave, uh, damage of, of work sites. This was all still happening. So we must bring back an empowered ABCC. We must reint uh, reintroduce the former coalition's government's Ensuring Integrity Bill, which Labor blocked in 2019. These are just some of the things that would provide some protection to future workers in the construction industry and ensure that this doesn't bleed further into civil contracting. We are seeing that play out right now. We are seeing that play out right now. Uh, it's happened, happened in Victoria. And Queensland and New South Wales are the next battleground to see that kind of intimidation, enforcement of subcontractors, overpayments, delays, intimidation expand from the construction sector into civil construction. 
it, it's extraordinary that it has happened uh, under Labor's watch while saying at the same time that there was nothing to see here. Because we owe it to their workers. We owe it to their families. We owe it to their children to stop this culture of intimidation, a culture that is not acceptable in this place. It is not acceptable in any other workplace in this country. But somehow it has become acceptable to cover your face, to shirt front other workers, to stop them going to work, to verbally and worse physically assault them and then follow them home so you know where they and their children live. This has been documented and yet kicking and screaming Labor has been dragged to finally acknowledge what has been going on for years. For years. So we owe it to the workers, their families and their children to stop this culture. But we also owe it to the taxpayers of this country because every time this happens on site, every delay, the 13 weeks of stoppages on the Children's Hospital in Victoria, every site that has been um, damaged, has been uh, delayed, it results in inflated costs. And who pays? Well, maybe you think it's the big construction companies, but it is always the taxpayer, particularly on government a public, uh, public assets that are being constructed. In my hometown of Townsville, the stadium overran by 30 per cent, millions of dollars, that was spent on building a stadium that money ran away from being, spilt, being spent in a hospital, on roads, uh, it, on other things that the, that, the, that the Australian taxpayer deserves. They've paid for. It's their money. And yet where's it gone? It's gone on to cost overruns, bullying and intimidation on construction sites right across this country. Imagine what that would do to the budget. The Treasurer should get very excited about those kind of savings. But mostly, mostly we owe it to all Australians who have said they want better. They want better in their workplaces. They want better from their leadership. And they certainly don't want to have us and the Labor government continue to walk past behaviour that is not acceptable anywhere, anywhere in the world. So we will be supervising and watching the minister because what he is proposing, unilateral powers, the ability to pull up the administration at his discretion, uh, I worry deeply that this is a tissue paper thin veneer of taking action, not because new information has been found out, but because they've been caught out, caught out protecting a union that funds them and that has possibly intimidated people sitting right here in this chamber. I hope that's not the case. So uh, we will continue to provide a, a bright light to hold the minister to account and we seek support of others to make amendments to this legislation that will make it stronger, more powerful to protect the people, specifically in the construction industry. Thank you.